off you go. Okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, yes, I'm Chris, I'm at IH Dubai, and uh, this talk is about rapport um, being compared with uh, Bikram Yoga, which we'll see as we go on, okay? So, first things first, what is, uh, what is Bikram Yoga? Anyone know what that is? Uh, yes, oof, painful is exactly what it is. You're, you're quite right. And, and it's at 40 degrees. Can everyone see that picture? Hey, yoga for thin people. No, it's not just for thin people. I'm, I'm probably one of the thinnest people that goes. Um, but yes, it's yoga done. It's 26 poses in yoga, but it, they're uh, 26 poses in 90 minutes in a room of 40 degrees. And it involves people doing things like you can see in that picture. Uh, yes, you do get quite sweaty. You, you kind of drip in a way you'd never quite thought you could. Um, now, if you look at that picture, you'll see that not everyone's enjoying themselves. Uh, indeed, they're in a lot of pain. And uh, I do a, a Bikram yoga class occasionally. I've done about 60 classes now, and I'm rubbish at it. All right, just, you know, straight off the bat, I'm rubbish at it. So when I was doing my yoga class, I started to think about how the teachers created rapport. And here is, here is a problem, because that's one of the teachers. Believe it or not, when she sweats, she doesn't just disappear like she does in the film. Uh, the water, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make her go away. She stays there. Now, the problem is that if you're in a, in a stressful situation, such as a, a yoga class, and you're not very good at it like I am, I am not. And um, in, in, in this situation, you want there to be some rapport in the room. Now, even in a, a situation such as yoga, where it's not very interactive. In fact, it's not really interactive at all. It's still possible to create this. And what I'd like to do in this talk is look at how this teacher fails to create it, okay? So next slide. What is rapport, basically, okay? Uh, rapport is defined variously. Um, it's basically the way people get along with each other, okay? So if there's a good feeling between two people, you can say that they have good rapport. Likewise, in a classroom setting, if there's a good feeling between the teacher and the students, the individual students together, um, that would be healthy rapport. Uh, now, so in a yoga context, how is it possible to make that work? What we're going to do in the rest of the talk is I'm going to show you a picture. And please, when you see the picture, just type into the chat box, what do you think it's got to do with creating rapport? So, for example, this lovely picture here. What's this got to do with creating rapport? You seem a bit stumped on it. I'm not surprised. It's one of the worst pictures I've ever seen, I have to say. As a painting, it should probably be banned. Um, it's, got this, it's in the, the Museum of Art in Brooklyn, I think. And um, what we have here is the yoga teacher, that little girl, and I suppose me, I'm the deer, and the deer was late. And so the deer is being reprimanded for being late. So what this means is in the yoga context, um, people come in late all the time. It's on at six o'clock in the evening. Everyone in Dubai, you know, has a, a job as anywhere else. The traffic on Sheikh Zayed Road out there can be a nightmare. It's in the marina. It's quite difficult to get to. Parking's not that easy if people do drive. And yet when someone comes in, the teacher tells them off in front of everybody else, stops the class, and yeah, basically publicly reprimands them, which is in no way conducive to good rapport. And everyone in the room is an adult. We all know that we should be on time. We don't need told. And to be honest, it can be quite cringeworthy. I mean, I sometimes stand at the front and I, I almost want to cry for the people at the back. It's horrible. OK, so what should she do? What do you think? Type something in the box. What she, should she do when someone is late? <laughs> I'll suggest that. Um, yes, basically, keep going, be supportive if you can, and speak to them later if it continues to happen. Find out why. Maybe it's the wrong class for them. Uh, and now, for everyone's benefit, I'll get rid of that terrible picture. So, next picture. What's it got to do with rapport? It's, uh, you can see three people on a podium and some on the either side.
Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, Hector. I'm sure it's not true. Uh, but you're right. Um, it's, that's exactly what it is. It is a head in the ground on the left, yes. It's that what she does is she does praise. We say that for rapport, it's very important to praise people, and, and she does do that, you know, credit where credit's due. But she only does this to the people who are really, really, really good. Now, some of us who have all the flexibility of, I don't know, some kind of uh, uh, something not very flexible, uh, such as my erudition in that moment. Those of us who are not very flexible, we can't do all these poses, okay? We can't do them very well. And it's very good to hear that you're trying, that the teacher's acknowledging that you've made an effort, that you're now 2.3 millimeters closer to being able to touch your toes or put your head on the ground when you're leaning over backwards. It's good to know this. Um, good teachers notice these things. There is another teacher at yoga and she's very, very encouraging. You, you make a slight improvement in one of your postures and she tells you how good it is and what to work on next and points out why it's improved. This one, uh, our green friend, uh, she, she does not do this. If you're very good, lots of praise. If you're not very good, none. Okay, whistle stop tour. Next slide, what's it got to do with rapport? I should say Homer doesn't come to the class, um, although I often do go no when I can't get something right. Um, yes, highlighting mistakes. Um, I said that she she doesn't um, praise everybody. Well, the, the other thing that she does is she points out when someone isn't doing the posture very well. Now, this could be someone who's not very good, like someone who's just a beginner. Um, and she'll say to them, no, don't do that. Pay attention. You have to pay attention to this. You're not no, that's not what I said. Pay attention. Look, your foot goes there, or you hold your foot from the other side, or something like that. Mistakes, as we probably all know, are part of any learning process. Someone who is brand new to Bikram Yoga, there's no way on earth they will ever be able to do the postures in the first, do the postures accurately in the first go. And criticizing them and telling them they're not paying attention is, is just not really very nice. Exactly the same would apply to English teaching. You're a beginner, you do not need told off because you misused, I don't know, the past perfect. You're not supposed to know it, you can't do it in your first few classes. So accept mistakes, let them go, gently push people, demand high yoga should exist, and push people in the right direction, but not any, you know, not what she does. Right, next picture. What's going on there? He's in a suit, which kind of suits Dubai, actually, although that tie, now I look at it more closely, that tie is atrocious. Uh, yes, know your students' names. Uh, thank you, Hector. That's exactly what I'm getting at with this one. What this teacher tends to do is, while focusing praise on the good people, she also knows the good people's names, and she knows their names very well, and she talks to them and says, oh, well done, um, uh, Angelica, that was a really good posture, etc." But she doesn't know the names of those who are not so good. Something I don't understand. She does know my name because I go so much, but and I've been going so long, even though I'm rubbish. But for a lot of people, she just doesn't know and kind of resorts to the you in the pink shorts. A lot of people in Dubai wear pink shorts. You in the pink shorts. Stop doing that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yes, in the ELT classroom, how does it relate? Know your students' names. It makes such a big difference to being able to say, um, Andrea, uh, could you do X, Y, Z, rather than you or you with the long hair or. It's just nicer, it makes it seem friendlier, it makes it seem like you care a bit more, which of course, being a good teacher, you should. So yes, learn your students' names. Next one. Uh, that's the Monty Python team, by the way, for those unsure of uh, what I was getting at. Yes, humor, thank you. Um, a sense of humor is very important in rapport. Now, obviously, you have to be yourself, you have to be authentic, but Creating a sense of humor or having a sense of humor and creating a space for people to get on and express jokes, etc., so they, they feel safe enough to do it, is important. Uh, the Wicked Witch of the West tends to turn the yoga class into an exercise in not having fun. Whereas the good teacher, there's another one, she's the good, uh, the good witch from The Wizard of Oz, she has a little joke now and then and releases the tension, no pun intended, and just keeps everything a bit lighter, okay? So it works out better that way. Sense of humor, important thing to take away from that slide. And then last one, what's going on here? 
That's, um, I think, the Indian Army marching uh, women in it. Um, oh, goodness, I'm running out of time. So let me just tell you, I've written that this is to say that everyone is different. Not everyone in yoga can do the same things, okay? I can't touch my toes, but I do have the strength in my legs to do some of the balances. These differences should be recognized and catered to, okay? Not everyone is going to be able to march in lockstep like those ladies there. And the teacher should be aware enough of this to be able to incorporate it into the class and help individuals, okay? You push individuals along, you have your sense of humor, you point out errors where necessary and give encouragement, but you must remember that it's not a one size fits all. Think of learning styles. It's that idea, okay? And finally, thank you very much for that. Uh, I think I've run out of time. Really, right? so thanks, I'm Chris. How did you get out of here? You, <laughs> you close down your camera and you switch off your yeah, mic. That, that was uh, excellent. So